Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at nerves of the upper body, which will include the upper extremity, the arm, and then also the forearm and hand. And then we'll also take a look at at least a few of the nerves that are along the neck, and then also the thorax. So to get started, let's take a look at what we have here with the brachial plexus, which brachial plexus means that it's a group of nerves that are going to be coming down from like the neck region, but it extends into the upper extremity, which is called the brachium or the brachial region. So when we look at the brachial region, we have these like groupings of these nerves. So to get started, you can see that they start out relatively joined together up here, but then they branch out further down. What we call these up here are the cords of the brachial plexus, of which we have three, the lateral, the medial, and then in the very back, the posterior. So the anterior, or sorry, the medial and lateral cords are actually a little bit more anterior. And in fact, those cords will actually further down branch and connect to each other. And those connections actually help with making some sort of organization that we can remember, which is a capital M. So it goes like up, down, up, down, kind of like an M, but it's a little bit of an abstract M, so work with me. But also, when we look at these nerves, we have a couple of things to like look for. Like we can consider which one is the most medial or lateral, or in the middle even. Like regardless, we want to have a starting point. But then also, maybe even remembering the names, we have an acronym for that, which is MMU, which stands for musculocutaneous nerve, median nerve, and ulnar nerve. Now you can start anywhere, but the nerve that I like to start off with is the ulnar nerve because it's the most medial. And if you follow that medial cord over here, it has a major nerve that comes down. And just to be clear for our class, we do not need to know this one. Like, don't worry about this one. This is a cutaneous nerve of the arm and forearm, the medial cutaneous antebrachial and brachial nerve. But then also the one that I actually wanna look for is this one. So once again, medial cord. And then if you look closely, this one is the most medial one, which if you remember the bone in the forearm, which is the most medial, is going to be the ulnar nerve. So the ulna, or sorry, the ulna bone. So the ulnar nerve is gonna run along with this. And if you're looking for it on a model or yourself, it'll run behind the medial epicondyle, like this is your funny bone. So when you hit your elbow, this is the nerve you hit. But then also the ulnar nerve goes down to the medial posterior and anterior sides of the 1.5 digits over here. So your pinky and half of your ring finger. So this would be the ulnar nerve, but look closely. Do you see how it has a connection to this one on the side? This one is now the middle nerve. So we're going a little bit backwards, but MMU, this one was U, this one is now one of your M ones. So you have the median nerve in the middle, which is going along the anterior side of the forearm. And you can see that going down to actually the lateral anterior 1.5 digits. So your thumb, index, middle finger, and half of your ring finger on the anterior side of your hand. That is innervated by median nerve, but also all of those, or actually most of those forearm flexors. So all of those flexors on the anterior side of your forearm, most of them are your median nerve, except for one, which was your ulnar nerve going to flexor copial nerus. Now let's follow this back up. So once again, this is median nerve. You can follow it up and notice that it's connected to this other nerve now. This nerve over here is your last nerve, which is your musculocutaneous nerve, so MMU. This is going to go down and then go to the lateral side of your forearm and then also the anterior side of your arm. So this is going to be the nerve that goes to your biceps brachii, your brachialis, and coracobrachialis. So these three are a little bit more anterior, as in like you can see them in the front. And then furthermore, as promised, there is an M, but follow carefully, starts down here, goes up, down, up, down. So if you kind of turn it this way, you can see it a little bit better. That would be the M nerves. So these three are connected. These are the MMU nerves, musculocutaneous, median, and ulnar. Now, if we follow this to the posterior side, you can see behind these three nerves, you have the posterior cord up here, which is going to have two nerves coming off of it. The first big one down here, this is going to be the one that goes to all of your extensors, your triceps brachii and all of the extensors of your forearm. This is going to be the radial nerve. 
So the radial nerve comes off of that posterior cord right here, and then it goes down all the way to the back of the hand to go to the posterior side of the lateral 3.5 digits for sensory innervation. But lastly, do you see that there is another branch that comes off here? Oh, sorry, here you go. Here is your posterior cord, here is your radial nerve, and then branching off of radial nerve, this right here, this is gonna be going to a muscle up here in your shoulder cap. So if you remember what muscle that is, that's the deltoid, and if you know the innervation of the deltoid, that's going to be the axillary nerve. So axillary, another thing that's helpful here is that axillary is one of your regional terms, which means armpit. So this nerve goes underneath the armpit to go to the back, around the back of the humerus, to wrap around to your shoulder and your deltoid. Now, to also take a look at a couple of nerves that we have here in the upper body, in the neck and thorax. So, one of which we can see pretty clearly already. If you look closely, there's this muscle that's actually underneath your heart, underneath your lungs, and right on top of your liver. This is the muscle for breathing, as in like your relaxed breathing. This is called your diaphragm. And then if you look closely, this nerve is coming off of your cervical plexus and going straight down through your thorax. This is your phrenic nerve. Now your phrenic nerve on other models, you might see it also going along the anterior scalene right up here, but I mean, nerve vini doesn't have any muscles. So take a look at your other models to make sure that you can see that. We definitely have other videos that will show that. Now, lastly, we do have a couple more nerves, which are going to be cranial nerves as well as a branch of that. And there are two blood vessels that help us to locate this. So if you look closely, you have these two really big blood vessels of the neck. So this one coming off of the brachial trunk right here, this is going to be the right common carotid artery, and then right next to it, the right internal jugular vein. And then if you look behind that, or between them rather, this right here is going to be the vagus nerve, or rather vagus cranial nerve 10, or vagus CN10. So don't forget those cranial nerves and those cranial nerve numbers, but um, you can see this nerve pretty clearly and very easily like due to the fact that you can locate those other blood vessels and use that as a reference point. So sometimes these things are really small, but if you know where to find it, if you can look for something that helps you to find it, then it's pretty easy to get to. But on the other side, we have one nerve that also branches off of it that we want you to know. And once again, use the same technique. So here is your left common carotid artery coming off of your aortic arch. Here is your left internal jugular vein going into your brachiocephalic vein, and those two will have a nerve right between them, which if we go behind here a little bit, you'll be able to see vagus CN10. Now, if you follow vagus CN10, it's going to go down and actually go like all the way to the esophagus back here, which is a little bit hard to see, but it's going to continue down and go all the way down to the, to the abdomen. But if you look closely, there's a branch that's coming off, or this is vagus CN10, and there's a branch that comes off of it right here, which goes down and wraps under the aortic arch. So the left one only is going to do this. So this one is going to be called the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. And what that means is the recurrent part means that it goes down and then back up, and it's gonna actually go back up to the larynx. So the larynx you can see here with the thyroid cartilage or the Adam's apple. So it goes down and then it wraps under the aortic arch and then it goes back up to the larynx. So that would be a branch of the vagus CN10, which you can see like running along the back, but then also that branch goes underneath the aortic arch and then larynx, to the larynx. Now with that said, that should be just about it for most of the large nerves that we've covered this time. So with that said, I think that's about it. So good luck with your studying. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time.